go play. Okay. Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. I am picking up the camera and starting another weekly vlog this week. It is currently Tuesday. I didn't film Monday. I was doing some other filming uh, and business bits yesterday, but I wanted to pick the camera up and just do like a week in my life as a small business owner and flower farmer. I have a lot of flower farming duties to do this week. I am doing a delivery on Thursday and then we have a market on Saturday. So there's going to be quite a bit of harvesting, which is good because I have lots of zinnias and dahlias ready to go. And I have a bit of gardening stuff to do as well. I need to go outside after I finish my cup of tea and um, probably do some bed prep and just get ready to plant some more successions of sunflowers. And there's always jobs to do in the garden, so I'm sure we will find some to do. But if you are new here, my name is Robin and I live here on the south coast of New South Wales, Australia, where I run a backyard flower farm. And I also do content creation, making these YouTube videos and then run the flower farm business and sell flowers and bath salts and bath bombs at markets and also do special orders on our website as well. I also have an online shop where I sell kind of botanical gifts and also flowers on there. And then, yeah, I also make things like bath salts and bath fizzes or bath bombs that I also sell at the markets. And I have just made a new batch, actually. Um, I was getting really low on the stock. We've been selling quite a lot at markets lately. So I wanted to just do another round of the bath fizzes. And yeah, they're really simple to make. I will include a little overlay of me uh, popping them in the molds and then popping them out. So I made some lavender ones or lavender and rose and also some eucalyptus and peppermint. Those are the two most popular. Uh, and then I also have some grapefruit ones, which are actually my personal favorite, but they don't sell as well as the other two varieties. And yeah, I try and use all natural ingredients for these. I personally have really sensitive skin and I like to make my own products. And I just thought I would start making them for the markets and they do really well. A lot of people aren't really sure what uh, they are, which I totally understand. They kind of look like some kind of dessert or something. Whenever I make them, all I can think of is that they look like panna cotta. But yes, they're not a dessert, they're not a cheese, as a lot of other people think they are. Um, they are natural bath fizzes. And yeah, I really like using them, so I wanted to make some. And I'm really happy with how these turned out. I will include the link to the recipe that I base them off, but I do substitute quite a lot of the ingredients for other things. For example, sometimes I use coconut oil like the recipe says, um, but in this batch I used some jojoba oil. This one here. I find this just feels so nice on your skin and I personally really like it. So I bought a little bottle just to test out to see how it works in these and I really like it. So I'm going to continue using this. Um, and I also use some Australian organic bentonite clay in these as well and um, I really like adding this in my baths when I have a bath and yeah I feel like it helps to moisturize my skin and has a lot of good properties in it so I have been adding this into the mixture and these two have been working really well and along with all of the other ingredients and yes it's very luxurious and I love using them myself and I have had some really really nice feedback uh, from people who have tried them so yes I'm very happy with them I would eventually love to have these on the website, but I just, I'm not quite there yet with making enough product to be able to put them on the website because I sell quite a lot at the markets and I'm trying to cash flow this business. I don't take any like business loans out to run this flower farm and online store. I just try and whatever money I get in, I pay myself and then I also put the money straight back into the business. So because I'm self-employed and then pay myself, um, there's not like a lot that I reinvest back into the business right now, but we're slowly growing and slowly getting there. So that was a long little chatty intro. <laughs> um, it's very windy outside. It's pretty gross with the wind right now. So I might wait a little bit, finish my cup of tea, do a bit more editing. And then this afternoon I will head out and I might just take my little clip microphone 
and show you how I prepare my garden beds to um, plant the next row of crops. had a quick change of clothes to just get in some clothes that don't it doesn't matter if they get dirty um, it is really windy out here so I'll see how I go with these next few clips I might end up just doing a voiceover but I have come down to the flower farm and there's one bed that has been covered for a few months now and I'm going to lift the black plastic up and see what it looks like uh, underneath it should be fine and ready to go and then I'm going to add some amendments so I'll show you what I'm going to add so this is the area that I'm going to be working on. As I was saying before, the black plastic has been down for a few months now and it's it's nothing special. It's just builder's plastic from um, Bunnings that I got. And I am going to be adding some amendments to the soil. So this is what I typically add. Um, firstly, I have a bucket of worm castings. This is from my worm farms that I have. And uh, this one has a mixture of lots of food scraps, garden waste, even like our cat waste goes into this one. You'll notice I'm using it on the flower beds, not the actual food beds. Uh, but you can see that everything has broken down and there are still some worms in here, which is fine. They'll just be added to the soil. Um, but I really do love adding a bucket of worm castings just to add a bit more life back into the soil whenever I plant anything. I always have bags of coffee on hand. This is just old coffee bags that I get from a local cafe and I add that on usually as well as some kind of um, amendment. I have blood and bone here. This is really good to add in NPK, your nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium, which plants need to survive and grow. And I also have some sugarcane mulch. This is my preferred mulch to use uh, because you can see it's really nice and fluffy and it also has nitrogen in it. So it's going to um, add back into my soils. I have very clay soils, so I do really want something that is nice and light and fluffy. I also have my broad fork, which I'm going to use first to just um, lighten up the soil, I suppose, add a bit of air into this area. Uh, I have my broad fork. I got it from FD Ryan Tools, I think. I will have it linked in the description box. It's probably one of the best investments I've made. It is such a good quality tool and I would highly recommend if you are going to invest in something like this to get something good quality. This bed had a lot of weeds in it and just a lot of grass and you can see it has all started to break down now. Uh, it's, it won't be fully completely dead. There'll be some grass roots in here that may come back up. Um, but that's where we're going to come in and add the mulch and I'll keep an eye on this area so that I can keep on top of the weeding. But you can see here, I'm just lightly using my broad fork, not to exactly turn the soil upside down, but to add in air. And this is really important for my soil in particular, which is very high clay, as I said, um, to actually aerate it so that worms and microbes can actually move through the soil. I won't have to do this forever, but this is only the second time I'm growing in this patch here. So I am every time I plant just adding a little bit of air to the soil. And you'll see I come through with a shovel later and just kind of flatten it out a little bit. Uh, but you can get um, five tine broad forks, I think, and seven tines. I have the seven tine broad fork and I really like it because it suits my beds. And yeah, this is what it looks like afterwards. 
and I'm just going to uh, use my shovel to just slightly break up some of the real larger chunks. You can see here that um, are just chunks of clay basically and um, plants aren't really going to enjoy growing in that condition so that's why it is really important for me to break up the soil a little bit and I personally prefer to use the broad fork than a tiller. It's also a lot more cost effective. I am now adding on some blood and bone. Like I said before, it's got your NPK. It also has a lot of other trace minerals that are important for um, healthy soil. I'm really low in boron and some other trace minerals. So I like adding blood and bone to this mixture. And, and then I'm adding some of the coffee grounds. This honestly really doesn't do that much except add organic matter. And I like to see it as it's like available food for the worms when I add them on with the worm castings they have something there ready to go it's also just going to attract microbes and life to start really activating the soil and start just having more activity so I like to add that in and then I add the worm castings on top of those just lightly on the soil and any uh, worms or worm eggs that might be in this mixture they will gradually find their new home and um, go into the soil and start breaking it up and just adding even more worm castings to the area. Worm castings are just one of my favorite types of amendments to use because it's a really slow release fertilizer. It doesn't burn your plants at all uh, and it has really available nutrients and minerals for your plants to uptake. And it also just uses all of the waste that I have in the garden and from the kitchen. Um, so yeah, I'm a big fan of worm farms if you can't tell. And then the last step, I'm just adding on my sugarcane mulch. Usually I would probably add a little bit more than this, but I was getting low in the bag and just wanted to get the job done. So I'll top this up later in the week. But for now, this is what this looks like. And it is pretty much ready to be planted, but I will leave it for about two, two and a half weeks or so. Um, I really want to wait until it rains. We haven't really had a lot of rain lately, but having some rain and then planting in there will kind of uh, make sure that all of the amendments have settled and have um, done their thing. So I'll, I want to wait for some of the rain to arrive, which has been, it's been quite dry the last few days. I also just wanted to include a few clips of some of the beautiful dahlias that I have because it's just such a delight to be able to work around all of these beautiful flowers and zinnias and straw flowers. This afternoon in particular, the light was just putting on a show. Coming into the cooler months is my favorite time to take photos and uh, film my videos just because the light looks absolutely beautiful and everything in the garden looks stunning. And then the last job I wanted to do was just start with this really weedy area here. Uh, I'm not going to do too much in this video. In another video I'll finish this off but I basically just covered it with that tarp and I'm going to let it be until the weeds have died off a little bit and I can then pull them out of the ground because this was just giving me a little bit too much anxiety of how many weeds that were in this area. So. This is my solution for now and I'll come back and slowly work on um, taking back this area of the flower farm when the cooler weather arrives. Good afternoon everyone, it is the next day now and I am out harvesting some flowers. 
I have just picked all of the sunflowers, which most of them look really, really good. But some of the sunflowers are just getting eaten by something. I can't really see exactly what it is, but the petals are being eaten, I think, when it's actually closed. Luckily, only about five or so are like this, but I'm just going to keep an eye on it. I think just as the season comes to an end, um, bugs are more prevalent. But yeah, it's a bit annoying because I've lost some of the sunflowers, but I've got a good amount here. Uh, so now I think I'm going to move on to some zinnias, get a bucket of those, and then probably some straw flowers and dahlias. Good morning everyone, it is now Thursday and I have all of the flowers that I picked yesterday afternoon ready to be arranged. Being completely honest, I just wasn't really in the best mood last night. I was pretty tired, there was a lot of noise going on around me. I get very affected by just like constant noise, so I often have to just put in my AirPods or some earplugs just to take that away. <laughs> So yes, I had planned on doing a little bit more of a chat through what I was harvesting, but I just needed to get the harvesting done. I'm hoping that I can do more of a chat when I harvest flowers tomorrow morning, um, which I'm going to be harvesting for the market then. So I've got all of the flowers here that I'm going to take to one of my local farm shops today. I'm a little bit behind schedule, but it's just, I had some other work stuff to do this morning, like posting a video and organizing all of that. So I'm going to get to arranging these now. I'll show you what they look like at the end. Sometimes I just find filming a little difficult, particularly these weekly vlogs. Sometimes, like a lot of you, I have kind of down days and it's hard to pick up the camera and film on those days. There wasn't anything really in particular, I suppose, that caused me to have the feelings that I did. It's just kind of what happens a lot of the time when you do have anxiety. And I think running a small business can be very taxing sometimes, even though I love what I'm doing and I wouldn't not do it. But it's hard to have regular breaks and regular days off because my mind doesn't usually switch off a lot of the time until I get to kind of like a breaking point in the week when I have to switch off because I just start to feel like a little bit burnt out. Luckily yesterday wasn't a um, very big downward spiral. I came out of it pretty quickly um, and I'm thankful that I do have all these beautiful flowers to arrange right now. So I'm going to pop a YouTube video on and arrange these and just go to my happy place, I suppose. Things have just been slowing down a little bit lately and maybe I'll chat about that just how to deal with like the ups and downs of running a small business later on in this video. Anyway, that is just how I'm feeling at the moment. I needed a bit of a break from filming. So going to do this, drop them off, and then we will get on to doing some other jobs this afternoon. Thank you. 
Good afternoon. It's not even afternoon. It's almost 7.30 and I am very, very exhausted. It's been a little bit of a challenging day for me. Um, it's like full transparency. It's that time of the month and I'm also just working through a lot of things right now um, in terms of both like the business and personal things and it's just like a, it's just a lot. I don't want this part of the video to seem like I'm just complaining or being ungrateful or anything like that. Technically I am complaining, but it's it's more my intentions behind this is to show just the ups and downs of running a small business and that some weeks it's amazing and really easy and flows really well and you get really good income and you just feel like you're doing it right. And then other weeks, I just feel like everything is on hard mode and it's difficult. There's a few things going on with the business that um, I'm not going to talk about because it involves other people, um, which some of it just gets a little frustrating for me. Um, but other things just in general, like it's been a little bit of a slow month in terms of income. February and March usually is coming down after Christmas. I also had a little bit of a break, so that has just yeah, changed things a little bit and I'm just trying to work my way up in sales again to be able to just not stress about money really. So I'm hoping for this market we can hit like 300 is, is the goal. I would be happy with even just 250 with sales. I'm finding the markets around here, it's so hard to get those bigger markets because there's just, there's not enough people in this area. There's not enough people at all. And I'm going to be changing my business strategy um, after this summer, like when I do spring flowers, I'm going to be changing my strategy a little bit and distributing and distributing my flowers to a lot more um, local stores around to just be able to have more outlets to sell, take less to markets and even less to some stores, but more stores, if you know what I mean and um, just be able to secure sales a little bit better. I think everyone is struggling a little bit right now and like flowers, um, bath, fizzes, they're a luxury item, people don't really need them. So I need to be making things look as beautiful as I can and as low priced as I possibly can go without underpricing myself because people just aren't really buying right now. That's the reality of things. Makes it really hard when you're already feeling just tired and drained to then not have a really good week in terms of sales. And so I'm going, I'm really hoping that tomorrow is going to be a good market, but for that to happen, I need to make some really good looking bouquets. Haven't done that yet. I have zero right now. We'll work on that. I have all of the beautiful bath fizzes that are fully dried now so I can um, pop them in a box and put them away but the yawning has commenced <laughs> it has commenced I don't really have too much advice for getting through slow periods because I'm still trying to navigate that myself. I know that was a question that I did get with a market Q&A that I was asking questions for. Um, today, what I've been doing to get through is actually just listening to my favorite flower farmers to get inspired and to find that energy again and that drive that I did have at the start. Um, so I've been listening to old lives from You Can't Eat the Grass. They're probably the main flower farming channel that I listen to and watch now. I do just love listening to all of their lives. They have some really good knowledge in them. And also they're just so excited a lot of the time to plant and grow things. And that is what I need in my life right now. Other than that, I think just yeah, having goals and making sure that you are consistently working towards them. Um, and I like to do, um, I'll, I'll try and make, and I've chatted about this a little bit before, but if I'm having a slow week, I will use that week to make a lot of stock. So I'll try and do this in at least like 
$100 or $200 bundles where I will make um, like all of these bath fizzes that I made. These, the whole lot of these, like the two trays is $100 worth of product. So although sales have been slow overall and I obviously haven't had the market tomorrow, I don't know how that's going to go, but at least I am prepped for when it is going to be busy because I know it will be and I'm putting it out there that it is going to be busy at markets coming up in the next few months that I have that there ready. I've made some stock. I have created the product that I know is going to sell. I've also been trying to propagate some plants to get ready for winter where I'm going to be selling a few more plants at the markets. So yeah, I find being busy, keeping busy, even though it does like mentally and emotionally drain me, it's the way that I cope through these slow weeks because although sales aren't that great, at least I am feeling productive. Speaking of being productive, I need to go now and um, make up all these flowers. I will put them all together and I'll show you what they look like at the end. I'll try and fit in some dinner in between while I'm doing that. Um, thankfully, Scott is making dinner tonight. That's another thing. If you can lean off your partner in these slow weeks, if you have a partner or your best friend or family, um, I... I really do think that your close people around you should be your safe space and um, don't be afraid to just lean off them a little bit when you're having a bit of a down week or a bit of a slow week and you need to dedicate more time to your business and hopefully you can also do the same for them. So I know after the markets for the next few days, I'm going to just do a little bit more housework around the house um, and let Scott have a bit of a break because right now he's kind of taking that role, but we're really good at communicating with each other in terms of that and just making sure that we share the load. So yeah, I don't feel guilty for not doing a lot of housework around this time. Uh, because earlier in the week after the markets, I will pick back up and help him around the house then. So thanks for joining me on my little chat. I'm going to get to it and um, get these bouquets made and grab a cat. <laughs> Would also recommend, he's not going to want to stay. <sighs> You're okay. Grab a cat or your pet and sniff them and give them a cuddle. I can already tell he's going to be a menace tonight. Rocky's usually a little bit of a terror and runs around when I'm making bouquets. Uh, and Annie, our other cat, she's cool, she's calm, and she's always just very interested in what I'm doing. So enough chatting. I'm going to go do flowers now. Good afternoon everyone. It is a few days later now and I'm sitting down just to do a little bit of a wrap up of the market, share how we went. Uh, so this was a record market by far of our worst market ever basically. <laughs> And it wasn't just me, there was a lot of other stall holders that I was chatting to saying that it was a very slow day and that it was some of uh, the worst days that they've had as well. So it's kind of nice to know it wasn't just me, but also just not that nice at all because it sucks for all of these small business uh, owners that go to the market and have a really terrible sales day. 
as I said earlier, I think February and March are just slower and generally that's what a lot of people say as well. Coming into Easter now, the sales should pick up a little bit because I, I know there's going to be more activity around and more tourists and just generally more people uh, in the area. So here's hoping. <laughs> um, so in total sales that we did, we did $146. That was our lowest market that we have ever done and um, it wasn't worth it basically. The time and the effort it took to make all the flowers, harvest everything, put everything there, actually spend time there. This market runs from uh, 8 or 8.30 to 12.30 so it's about four and a bit hours or so uh, and yeah that's just not a lot of money for the time spent there. We sold $36 in bath salts ten dollars in uh like mini dried flowers and a hundred dollars worth of the twenty dollar uh, mixed arrangements the fees associated with this uh for square transactions that took two dollars eighty and then it was another thirty dollars for the actual market stalls so we came home with one hundred and thirteen dollars and twenty cents in terms of bunches of flowers that I sold in store at the farm shop, I sold two bunches. Well, <laughs> so this takes the total up to about, I'm gonna say about like 140 or so for what we did for the week. Now, overall, that's pretty bad. Um, yeah, it's not great at all. So I'm hoping that the market that I'm doing this weekend is going to be better. And um, I also have the YouTube income to fall back on as well. Uh, but yeah that's what we did for the week and i wanted to be completely transparent with you and share just what a slow and hard week looks like for a small business owner where you um you're doing everything that has worked previously like everything i've done previously has been really great in terms of sales like selling in store and at markets but then some weeks they are just completely different and really bad in terms of sales and that's why I really think it's important to diversify where you're selling your flowers. Um, I really need to get better on my Instagram and Facebook posting game because I'm really, really bad at that. I haven't done a post since like Valentine's Day and that is pretty bad for me. So I need to go out and take some photos of flowers and just get back into photography because I know that does bring in a lot of customers. Uh, and I also just need to go around to different stores and start chatting to people and seeing if they would also like to stock my flowers because I know there's a market for them. Uh, I just need to sprinkle them around a little bit more. I hope this video hasn't been too discouraging and uh, I just want to let you know like I'm I'm fine. I'm okay. I'm not like super upset about things that are happening. I just wanted to share realistically this is what happens. Uh, it's not always great selling weeks when you're running a small business. But the main thing is, is that I learn from these things that happen and just keep evolving and keep changing the business um, so that it isn't super risky when I do have lower weeks like that. I can rely on sales and income from other sources. I still truly, truly love what I do. I love growing flowers. I love making these videos and I love uh, going to markets. So it's not something that I would like to stop in the near future. But these numbers really aren't going to be very sustainable for me uh, unless I do kind of change up my strategy a little bit. So I'm going to have a bit of a think over the next few weeks and see what I can do differently. Uh, but if you've got any advice that you want to share about or any feedback that you might have, um, leave me a comment as nice as you can leave the comment, which you all leave beautiful and lovely comments. And I just also want to say a massive thank you to everyone who does take the time to leave comments. I read all comments that I do get. I am a little bit slow at replying to a lot of them. And a lot of the time I do set a boundary for myself where um, I just have a break from my whole social media so that I can just um, be in my own bubble a lot of the time. And if I miss comments, during that period then I'm really sorry but I do read them all and I am very very thankful for all of your feedback and support and just ideas because I get so many ideas from the comments and I really do appreciate you taking the time to uh, yeah, leave your feedback on what I could do different and any ideas that you might have for products or running the market stall or anything like that. 
So thank you so much for watching this video. If you would like to further support me, you can uh, give this video a like and subscribe for lots more gardening and flower farming and market small business content. Uh, it is free for you and really does help my channel and business out quite a lot. I also have an online store, which I'm going to be pushing a little bit more um, just to get that going and get some more products on there uh, very soon. I have lots of seeds that I've been saving, so I would love to share some seeds online with you all. They're all grown in the backyard and they've been drying uh, and I'm going to be testing them out just to make sure they have good germination rate. And you can also follow me on Instagram at the nature patch and also uh, at the patch in bloom for my flower farming business where I just share what I'm getting up to at markets and the nature patch Instagram is just what I get up to on a day to day basis in the garden. So thank you so, so much for watching this video. I hope you're all having a lovely day wherever you are in the world and until my next one, happy gardening everyone.